Hello there, everyone in here and out there, local and abroad. I am Jeff, and this is Tabletop Toolbox, a YouTube channel dedicated to tabletop board gaming. And just the other day, I published a video here on the channel recapping the 34 different games that I played at the Dice Tower Retreat in Orlando, Florida just last week. That video clocked in at just under two hours. It took me 10 hours to edit that thing down, and as I was sitting there waiting for it to upload, I thought, I probably need to recap the recap. And so, in that line of thinking, and wanting to have just a little bit of fun with the subject, I'm deciding to host my first ever Tabletop Toolbox Awards Ceremony. So, I will be featuring 10 different games in this video, some of the best, some of the worst, and everything in between, and I promise to keep this one short and sweet. So with all that being said, let's bring on the confetti. I, of course, want to start things off here on a positive note, so I'm starting off with my biggest surprise, and of course this being a pleasant surprise, a game that I maybe went into without the highest expectations, but came out having a very good time. Now, there were a number of contenders in this category, and in fact it became a catalyst to come up with some other categories, but it still came down to just two games. The first was Windmill Valley by Board and & Dice, and the other being Skate Summer by Pandasaurus. Now, I mentioned in the longer video that both of these games come from publishers that I am not in incredibly fond of. A couple of their games have just fallen flat for me over the years. However, I'm going to give this one to Windmill Valley by Board & Dice. I loved the lavish production of this game. It is a beautiful central board on the table. I love the gear mechanism that you use to pick your actions, and in general, I just liked the puzzle of this game. Skate Summer was a great game. I really had a lot of fun playing with it, and I really did enjoy the theme and sort of how that comes through in the game, but it was that push-your-luck element of the balance at each round that just held it back just a hair for me, giving Windmill Valley the edge. So, my best pleasant experience at the convention, Windmill Valley. I'm now going to go ahead and move on to the biggest letdown, sort of the biggest disappointment of the convention. Again, not a game that I necessarily didn't like or disliked or didn't have fun with, but just a game that I went into with slightly higher expectations and came out feeling a little underwhelmed. And I'm going to give this one to Harvest by Keymaster. Now, I again mentioned this in a longer video that uh, I went into this really looking forward to a good farming experience, something that would provide, you know, again, a decent challenge, a decent secret sequence of events through managing this farm, and you kind of get that, but it just felt so restrictive. It felt so difficult to get anything done, uh, and we were all sort of just clamoring to, to work through these different actions and try and meet our own goals. Not necessarily goals within the game, but of course just trying to get these fields planted, the crops tended to, the crops harvested, and having it all sort of make sense. Uh, I, again, I didn't hate the game, I didn't even necessarily dislike the game, but I kind of walked out of this, or I should say I walked into this thinking that this would be a game that I would likely end up purchasing, and I don't think I will, at least not anytime soon. A little bummed about it all, Harvest, by Keymaster. All right, up next was a personal accomplishment, something that I was really looking forward to being able to play while there at the convention, and I did get it done, and I'm giving this one over to Empires of the Void 2. This is from Red Raven Games, and the designer is Ryan Lockett. Now, as I mentioned in my other video, this is a game that I have been wanting to play for at least four years. I've had this in my Amazon wish list for at least that long. And in fact, I made an agreement with my friends Katie and Greg to play this, sometime at the convention, but I was actually able to wrangle up a couple of extra players, including one who, when he found out we wanted to play this, was very anxious to join because he has had the game in his collection for a number of years and never had a chance to play it. And even as we had it on the table and were playing, we had at least two other people stop by saying either they hadn't seen this game played in years and they thought it was just great to see it out, or that they too had a copy that they had never been able to play. Uh, as I mentioned in a longer video, it wasn't um, it wasn't the the huge experience that I was kind of hoping for. Not a disappointing game by any means, at least not like Harvest, uh, but definitely wasn't exactly what I expected. If that makes a lot of sense, there seems to be so much in the game that we just didn't really get to experience. I don't know if we played it incorrectly or if we just weren't playing it efficiently enough efficiently enough to explore all of that. But still, something that I am very very thankful that I got to play. Definitely something a type of game that the retreat is a perfect event to get played at. That goes to Empires of the Void 2 by Ryan Lockett, my biggest 
accomplishment. I'm also going to point out a couple of other games that I got to play in unique categories. First is my favorite co-op game. I only played two co-op games there, Bomb Busters by, I believe that was 25th Century Games, and uh, the... The other one was Link City by Blue Orange Games, and I'm going to give this one to Bomb Busters. I did enjoy both of these games, but specifically Bomb Busters for the fact that everyone is involved in the experience. In Link City, at least one player has to kind of sit out each round while everyone else talks it out, and that's just a difficult experience, I think, to sometimes sit through because you want to be helpful, but you can't. So I'm leaning towards Bomb Busters on this one. I really did enjoy the, the, the puzzle of this, and I enjoy the way that that puzzle grows. Uh, you very quickly get into tools and equipment that you can use to kind of help players out. And I just enjoyed the, the uniqueness of the table talk. While you're not supposed to obviously give away too much useful information, uh, we just had a lot of fun playing this one. So that is Bomb Busters, my favorite co-op game of the retreat. I'm also going to give a solo pick. Uh, now, I want to caveat this very carefully in that there are no solo components or any solo rules in most of the games at the Dice Tower Library, unless, of course, it's part of the rule book or just uses existing components within the game. Tom Vassell kind of has a, uh, uh, a, a code, if you will, in that he doesn't like to have solo players at the conventions. The, obviously, the idea is to go there and meet folks and play games, and I can understand that. But after playing this particular game, Game, I am more interested than ever in trying to play it solo. This is Inventions Evolution of Ideas by Vital Lacerda. I talked about this in the longer video, of course. This is a combo-tastic, combo-rific kind of a game where you are trying to set up these long chains through multiple events, eventually culminating in the, the, the one action that you are actually trying to get to. And it took me a little while to figure this out, at least a good two-thirds of the way through the game before I realized that that's what I was supposed to be doing. And of course, by then it was too late for it to have a major impact on my score. But I really did enjoy getting to think that way and approaching the game from that angle. I could see myself sitting down with a set of D10 dice and just planning out, okay, this is my ninth action. And then I'm going to use this as my eighth action. And then I'm going to trigger that from this seventh action. And of course, that would piss the living daylights out of anyone sitting at the table with me, but I think that having that time to really sit there and pick it apart, to just plan out a very optimal path would be a very rewarding solo experience. Now, I don't plan on buying this game for that experience alone, and again, I have no idea how this plays. I didn't look at the rules for solo play whatsoever. I'm sure that there is a AI opponent or two that's out there kind of blocking you, but still something I would not mind checking out. My solo pick Inventions by Vital Lacerda. I've also got one unplanned purchase here. This is, again, sort of a pleasant surprise game, a game that I was not expecting to have the impact on me that it did, and I have purchased this game. I'm waiting for it to come in. This is Tobago. Now, I did not make note of the designer or the publisher. I'll flash those down here in the bottom of the screen, but I mentioned that Emery Harris, the new uh, uh, marketing manager there at the Dice Tower, kept bugging me ever since Dice Tower East to play this game. We finally got a chance to sync up our schedules and play this, and I really enjoyed it. I love the production of this game. I love the way that it looks on the table. I love the little components, the little statues, the little Jeeps, and I showed this to my wife and daughter, both of which had an interest in checking it out, and so, of course, it's been added to the collection. I cannot wait for this one to come in and give it a play. That is Tobago. And I should mention that that game has been out of print. It is currently back in print. And so if you're interested, you might want to jump on that while you can. I also have a guilty-ish pleasure. This was a game that I, I sort of played because I was trying to be very agreeable throughout this convention. I was trying to just kind of take any gaming experience that I could get, and then I ended up kind of enjoying this more than I thought I would. Again, not necessarily a surprise of a game, but just something that I'm almost a little embarrassed to admit that I had fun with. Uh, again, a couple different ways that this could have gone. Explorers of the North Sea. I mentioned that I'm not a huge fan of Garfield games or most of the Shem Phillip titles, uh, or also Fleet the dice game is I am not a fan of roll and write games at all, but I'm going to give this one to Explorers of the North Sea. I mentioned in the other video that I felt like a lot of the Garfield games 
sort of score the same way. The mechanisms are very different, but you're always just kind of going up tracks, you're going for general points, and I, I've just never really enjoyed most of those systems. However, this game is completely different from any of those others. It scores differently, it plays differently, and I really enjoy tile placement exploration games where you are trying to build a map, in this case, a, a archipelago of various islands, and I love that I was able to kind of turtle my way into my own corner and just build up whatever I wanted to build up. I like the way that this looked at the end, even though it was somewhat generic, just lots of green swaths and lots of water, uh, but still the fact that it's a map that actually makes sense. You have to connect various environments. You have to connect up the edges of each tile so that it makes a map that makes sense. Uh, and so, yeah, I was almost, almost a little ashamed to admit how much fun I had with Explorers of the North Sea by Garfield Games. Just three more, three more of these left to go. I'm gonna, this one is just the game that brought us the most and biggest laughs. The game that we were just hysterically laughing at the whole time. And I just have to give this to Godzilla Total War. Now I shared a story with this in the other video where this was a review copy provided to me by the Dice Tower. I had no way of getting this played because it's kind of a party game. I compared this to uh, Exploding Godzillas. It kind of reminded me of Exploding Kittens, uh, but I just could not get this played. And so I put it up in the game tray trade at this retreat. Someone took it, opened it, we ended up playing it. And the game is pretty dumb. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a pretty dumb game, but our experience with it was just a tremendous amount of fun. Uh, the people that I played with, Martin and Colin, two Eric's and Wendy Yee, <laughs> it just made it a very, very funny experience, especially when I watched Colin, who I couldn't put in at much more than 140 pounds, if he's wet, probably, uh, bullying uh, Eric Link, who I would put in at maybe 200 pounds, tattooed, metal rings, I'm sure this guy drives a Harley, and just Colin bullnosing Eric out of the way so that Colin could grab his card before Eric could play a card, since there is a rule in this game that once another card is played, if you did not draw, you cannot draw your next card. Of course, the draw deck was empty and the discard pile was out of reach. And so Colin is pushing Eric out of the way, just flailing for a card. <laughs> it was the funniest thing I had ever seen. We were all laughing hysterically and I would never seek out this game. I would never want to play this game again, except maybe with those five or so people, although I'm sure Wendy Yee would pay good money to not be a part of that experience. Still, a game that we laughed at just tremendously had a lot of fun with, Godzilla Total War. All right, two more left to go. I, of course, have to give this category of my least favorite game of the entire con, the one that definitely just let me down, the one that I could not wait to be over, and I'm giving this one to Kemet Blood and Sand. I mentioned in the other video, I did not necessarily have a phenomenal teach of this game, but even then, I felt that the player powers that you get from building the temple were just woefully imbalanced. Some players had incredible military strength out of it while I had the ability to maybe move one extra space or something that just did not feel as useful to me. The combat, while it seemed very simple, just always seemed to break in someone else's favor. Uh, I did not like how easily you could just pop up in someone's backyard and trigger a fight. And it just overall was a very, very frustrating experience. And I was very, very glad when that game wrapped up. That was Kemet Blood and Sand. Now, of course, I have to do a favorite game, and this one is right next to me. My favorite game of the convention was Rock Hard 1977 by Devere and Jackie Fox of the band The Runaways. This game, as I mentioned in the other video, and I've said this several times, even at the convention, if there is a more thematic board game, I haven't played it. Maybe a nod to Obsession by Dan Halligan, but still, this game it provides its theme even in the rules teach. In fact, I played this two times at the retreat. I didn't get to quite finish the second game, but we were pretty close to the end. But I also got to teach it two additional times, and I had just as much fun teaching this game as I did playing it. Everything in this box feels like it belongs in its theme. Everything from the little starting job that you have to have and, and how anxious you are to quit that job and start making money as a professional rock star to some of the bad decisions you have to make, some of the questionable 
questionable people that you run into, the band manager that can help you, but you have to pay them along the way. Just everything in this makes a ton of sense. I loved playing this. I actually wish it had a solo mode or else this would have been my solo game recommendation. It plays a minimum at two players. Uh, I'm looking forward to playing this. This came in just the other day. In fact, I mentioned in that long video, it showed up while I was editing that video. Of course, it, it took 10 hours. A lot of stuff happened while I was editing that video. Anyways, just a phenomenal experience. This, uh, same thing for Devere. I haven't liked a lot of the stuff that Devere has put out, but this, absolutely shatters the record for me and Devere Games. My favorite game of the convention, Rock Hard 1977. And that already concludes the first Tabletop Toolbox Awards ceremony. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've had a good time with this. And of course, if you want to know some more about these games and my experiences with them, you can go and check out the other video that I put out just the other day. It is timestamped for every game, so you can jump exactly to what you want to see and learn more about these titles. So, with all that being said, I'm going to wrap this one up. Talk to you soon. Cheers.